Question 43. Why don't we see the same physical healings happening today like we read about in the Bible? I think probably of all the questions that I've received, of all the objections that I've gotten to supernatural healing ministry, this is probably the one that I've been asked the most. All right, Jared, if I'm going to believe that the Lord still heals today, like he did in the Bible, well, then why don't I see the same kind of healings happening today like we see in the Bible? I mean, look around you, Jared. Um, how would you answer that? Well, some would answer this way. Some would say, well, the miracles recorded in the Bible are myths and legends. They never happened. Right? This would be somebody who subscribes to rationalism, uh, who's somebody who is anti-supernatural, or you could attribute this to just good old-fashioned unbelief, right? <laughs> some would say, well, why? miracles in the Bible, we don't see that today. Uh, uh, somebody with unbelief would say, well, that means they probably didn't happen in the Bible either. All right, we're not there. Some would say, some more believing Christians would say, well, the age of miracles has passed. That was a phrase that was popular 100 years ago. The age of miracles has passed or has ceased. Uh, they don't happen anymore. So these Christians would affirm that the miraculous happened in the Gospels and in the book of Acts like we see, but they would say that stuff doesn't happen anymore. And there's actually a, a term inside the church for people who believe that. They're called cessationists because they believe the miracles have ceased. Okay, I don't believe that. Don't think the Bible teaches that. Some would then, with a little bit more belief than a cessationist, would say, well, those supernatural miracles like we see in the scriptures, they could happen today, but it's extremely rare and it shouldn't be expected. People who would answer this way, in my opinion, just simply lack experience. They've never seen the kind of miracles happen in their church like Peter and Paul maybe saw in their churches. So because there's such a difference, they don't want to discount what God could do. I mean, God could do anything. But because they lack experience with the supernatural, they would say maybe they're open to the miraculous, but they're cautious, right? knowing that there's a lot of fakes and frauds out there, which that's going to be our last question for today. But they lack experience, and so they are open yet cautious. So I wouldn't answer any of those three ways. Here's how I would answer. The same kind of miracles recorded in the scripture have continued to happen throughout church history and are still happening today. That's a bold statement. Keep listening. The lame are now walking. The blind are seeing. The deaf are hearing. The mute are speaking, the terminally ill are being healed, and the dead are being raised today. That was a, a collection of half a dozen of the most amazing miracles that we see in the New Testament. And I'm telling you that these same miracles, the same supernatural healing ministry is happening today. They are happening in developing countries and developed countries these miracles are well documented. They happen in stadiums, in churches, in homes, and in hospital rooms. They may not happen with the same regularity as they did when Jesus ministered in Israel, but he is still working miracles. Jesus is still working miracles through the prayers and hands of his faith-filled, spirit-empowered followers. So, why do I believe this? Why would that be my answer to this question? Well, number one, because it is the clear message of Jesus. John 14, 12. We've already talked about it during this series. There's no getting around it. It's a simple, simple, simple verse to understand. <laughs> but it's hard for many people to believe. Here's the verse, John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Do you remember what he did when he went to the Father? What did he do when he went to the Father? We already saw it in Mark 16. When he went to the Father, when he ascended, he sat down on his throne and he began to work through his people. 
That's what he did when he went to the Father. He said, because I'm going to have that place of prominence, because I have a throne at the right hand of the Father in which I will rule in and over my church, because of my position, Jesus is telling us in John 14, 12, that we, his church, will do the same works that he did and greater works because he's going to the Father. One need only ask this question, what works did Jesus do? If Jesus says, my followers will do the same works that I did, what works did Jesus do? I asked myself that question many years ago, and so I took out a journal, and I read through the Gospels, and every time Jesus did something, every time he did something that could be qualified as a work, I jotted it down. And I I ended up making a big, long list of all the works of Jesus. And then I imported that list into this passage, into this promise. Whosoever believeth in me, if you want to use King James English, whoever believes in me, all followers, will do the works that I do. If you're an obedient follower of Jesus, you can look and you can say, yeah, I do some of the same works that Jesus does. But there might be some works that you didn't know that you could do. Maybe you didn't know that you could also be used to heal the sick. But this verse says that the same works that Jesus did, his followers will do. And greater works will he do because I am going to the the Father. When I see that verse, I believe that what Jesus is saying is that followers to come after him will engage in the same kind of ministry and therefore will see the same kind of results that Jesus and the 12 and the 72 did, which, which, includes, which includes supernatural healing ministry. If you, need, if you need it here in one other place, Mark 16, I'll, I'll bring you back to Mark 16. Jesus says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. You ready? Those who believe in Jesus, these signs will accompany those people. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. It's clear, Mark 16. So, why do I believe that the same kind of miracles recorded in the scriptures have continued to happen throughout church history and are still happening today? I believe it, number one, because it's the clear message of Jesus. But I believe it, number two, because it's the clear testimony of the church. It's the testimony of the church for the last 2,000 years. If you simply know where to look, and if you, and if you, if you get out around the world and you ask people, you ask the followers of Jesus, they will confirm that what Jesus promised has actually happened. Now, the likelihood of you going around the world and conducting hundreds and thousands of interviews and getting the testimonies of uh, the lame walking and the blind seeing and the dead being raised, the likelihood of you being able to do that is probably slim, right? Most of us aren't afforded that kind of luxury. But there are some Christians who have taken it upon themselves to do just that. And they have compiled their research and their findings in a book. And we are so blessed by uh, their contributions to the church. So I want to bring up one such resource to you right now. And that is a resource by a man named Craig uh, Keener. Craig Keener wrote a book called Miracles back in 2011. Uh, It's a two-volume work, 1170 pages. And if you don't know who Craig Keener is, well, then this lesson is just going to be a blessing, hopefully, for the rest of your life. Because Craig Keener is one of the uh, preeminent uh, theologians in the world today. Um, and uh, you will be blessed by his books and his commentary. So I want to put you on his radar. I want to put this book on your radar today. Uh, but let me put his whole life's work on your radar. Uh, you'll be blessed by any book that you get by Craig Keener. So in the book on miracles... Uh, which, if you get the Kindle version, it's much easier to, well, it's it's hard to carry around 1,170 pages, Uh, but in a nice, uh, in a Kindle book form, you can carry it around on your phone or on your iPad. Uh, But in that book, he talks about cataracts and goiters instantly and visibly healed, Uh, paralytics suddenly able to walk, multiple sclerosis radically cured, Broken bones suddenly mended. Hearing for the deaf, sight for the blind, voices restored. These are testimonies, first-hand, second-hand testimonies 
uh, that he's getting. Burns disappearing, massive hemorrhaging stopped, failing kidneys cured, rheumatoid arthritis and osteoporosis gone, life given back to the dead even after several hours of the person being dead. He has accounts from people all around the world, accounts from China, Mozambique, the Philippines, Nigeria, Argentina, Brazil, Cuba, Ecuador, Indonesia, South Korea, America, and many other countries. These testimonies in his book come from multiple and independent eyewitnesses with reputations for integrity, including physicians. He is no slouch researcher. Uh, the commentary that he did for, uh, on the book of Acts is over three million words. If you look at just the, the resources that he cited in this work on miracles, 1170 pages, uh, if you look at just the resources, I mean, it's hundreds of pages just dedicated to citing all of his resources. Uh, so this is, a, uh, th this is an investigator, a researcher, a theologian that can be trusted. Uh, his uh, resources include names, dates, medical documentation in many cases of these healing uh, testimonies. And as you read the book, you realize that timing is usually the most dramatic elements of the testimonies. Uh, account after account of instantaneous results right after prayers to Jesus. The book includes lots of cancer healings, malignant brain tumors disappearing. Many of these uh, healings are rare diseases being healed. Uh, like reticulum cell sarcoma, and so many others. I mean, you can read page after page after page of what God did in this country, and then in that country, uh, and then during this time period, page after page after page of just people being raised from the dead. The testimonies are there. If we will but simply open our eyes, and if we will but simply listen to the testimony of God's people, they will tell us in a resounding fashion, that what Jesus promised in John 14, 12, what Jesus said at the end of Mark chapter number 16, has been the testimony of God's people throughout church history. What God did then, he is still doing now.